guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be chatting about some of the tools I use to make this whole writer, YouTuber, author thing happen. Namely, a lot of you guys have asked about the Notion templates that I use and have tweaked and my organization system for my publication schedule and also my video schedule. But also, I have been learning Procreate. <laughs> this is just an iPad, Procreate is on the iPad, yes. I've been trying to get into the GIF making game in order to sort of spice up my newsletters and book promo. I'm learning how to do this through this very cool like beginner friendly series by Rich Armstrong on Skillshare, who's also the sponsor of today's video. And actually the guy who made the free template that I use for both the publication schedule and the video schedule, his name's Tom Frank. He actually makes videos here on YouTube and has classes on Skillshare. He does a lot of productivity related videos that I've really enjoyed in the past. So quick shout out to Skillshare. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. For those of you who haven't heard me talk about them before, Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, writing, freelancing, video editing, and a lot more. As mentioned, I recently took Rich Armstrong's class, Procreate Animation, Make Fun Gifts and Video, part of it, I'm not done yet, on how to make gifts. Like this. Ooh, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm excited for this to help liven up my videos, especially as I get better at it, but also it's gonna help so much with book promo, especially as, you know, as authors, we're having to do a lot of our own promotion, whether you're an indie author or a trad pub author, as well as the newsletter that I'm trying to get ramped up. And trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> really, this has truly really shown me how terrible my handwriting is, but I'm hoping with practice, I will get much better. <laughs> Another of the classes that I've loved is from Ashley C. Ford. She was named by Forbes as one of the 30 under 30 for media in 2017. She teaches a 30 minute class, creative personal writing, write the real you. So a super digestible size. And I loved how she spoke about writing from memory, that our memories are special because they don't stay in the past and we carry them with us forever. But the key to writing those memories in an artistic way and one that that will be more applicable to publications is to talk about how that memory ties into the present. So since Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow your creativity wherever it takes you. And they are running a special promo this summer. So the first 1,000 of y'all to click my link in the description box down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare premium. So you can start exploring your creativity today. And thank you to Rich Armstrong for teaching me how to make gifts. <laughs> We're gonna circle back around to Procreate after this and a few of the other quick applications website references that I've been using that help me a lot. And focus now on the wonder that is Notion. It's got Kanban boards, it's got databases. You can just use it for plain old notes. It really is a perfect example of it is what you make of it. So I first saw Damon Dominique talk about this, then more Hannah, and then I followed her video back to Thomas Frank's video. <laughs> he has all sorts of free templates. In fact, he has a new free habit tracker in Notion that I'm excited to try out. And basically I have sort of edited his template for video creators. So I will leave a link to all of those people and all of those templates down below. You can also search really quickly and find a bunch of people using Notion to track their books that they've read. It has blown up on booktube, on bookstagram, on book talk as a way to organize their TBRs. It's just very cool. I will however warn you that the second that you search for Notion in YouTube, like you're done. The algorithm will just send you nonstop Notion stuff, which is wonderful and also a rabbit hole. I'm warning you now. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at what I got and we'll start with my video tracker the place that I keep track of all my YouTube stuff. And I really haven't changed this much from the template. I added my own sort of background and, and that's pretty much it. You can change the cover, make it fun, upload your own stuff. It's cool. My personal favorite view is the calendar published dates. I like it best for the at a glance sort of thing. Gives me a good indicator of what I need to do. That being said, it's all kinds of all over the place right now. <laughs> I'm in the process of transitioning to only have two videos per week or maybe even like one and a half videos per week. So. I've always struggled with having way too many ideas for the amount of time that I have. And this is even harder as I sort of peel this back in order to focus more on writing um, and some of the other stuff I have going on. So anyways, that's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> but this is why I love the drag and drop feature. So like right now using Notion to juggle publication schedules, I am actually filming it. Haha. Ha. Oh, and the sponsor today, Skillshare. Don't know when the publication date is gonna be, but we're gonna say it's the 9th because why not? <laughs> Some of y'all will have seen me talk about this before, but I used to try and replicate something similar in Google Sheets. The problem with that is that it wasn't quite it didn't have this drag and drop feature basically. I had to retype everything or I had to cut and paste stuff and it wasn't as easily movable, we'll say. And it didn't keep all of the information together because once I click into this, I can add my own comments, I can add my own notes, I can script my entire video 
in Notion within this particular video. So anyways, it's impressive. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this around to, um, I'm just really having fun with the drag and dropping, but actually I need to add a video um, that is not here. So 5K for five days, that's a current experiment that I'm working on. Um, the status is that it is filming. <laughs> Published date, July 13th, sure. So for the sponsor, I'm gonna say Patreon because it is my monthly experiment video. For tags, I, you know, created all these tags myself, the, the kinds of things that I'm currently doing. So it's gonna be an author tube video. It's gonna be a writing vlog. Um, yeah channel, Kate Cavanaugh. And there's this other section where I could put the dates and times that I'm filming. I'll show you a different view of this. Um, so you can really get a handle on it. This hasn't been as important for me as I've gone down to two videos a week, but 5K for five days. Ta-da! And we'll move that over there. So let's go ahead and look at the filming and editing schedule. This kind of long form view I use more often for my publication schedule. It's really nice to be able to see sort of my rereading time, my revising time, time with the editor, etc. We will get to that though. I was using it more back in April, a bit in May, haven't really used it since. I do like the board for the status view. So I have ideas for other videos that could not possibly fit under AuthorTube, BookTube, anything that I could think to try and pigeonhole it into Kate Cavanaugh. So at some point, I like the idea of coming up with a second channel. So I also just put all these dumb ideas like GBBO and me, it's an idea. What even is this? I don't know yet. It's also nice to see what I'm currently researching, what I'm currently scripting, what I'm currently filming, or as I'm using it, so like my small town Hallmark movie. I have filmed like a bunch of footage. I have it stored somewhere. And it's nice to keep track of that. If I was smart about this, I'd actually put the dates in here. So I need to go back and open up my camera and see when that is, but Notion would have it, would have it for me. That is the board status view. We already went over the published dates. Then just an entire table of ideas that feels somewhat endless. And the video ideas board that basically has it separated out by channel. I, again, I think you can start seeing how this would be helpful if you have multiple pen names like I do in order to keep track of stuff. Now you can see on the side here that I have my publishing tracker, a list of bestsellers that I missed, um, Renaissance Festival inspiration. It is acting kind of as my Pinterest board. The Summer Scare Readathon that Jessica hosted, I did a really quick, table just to keep track of everything. I actually haven't updated this as I have not finished the video yet. So what I ended up with has not made it on here. When I was doing the 24 hour write-a-thon and trying to organize that, I needed to figure out if I was live streaming solo, which platform I was doing it on, what the time period was. It helped keep me organized. <laughs> which is really the best part of Notion for me at least. So I'm not fully comfortable sharing my publishing tracker. One, because I have pin name information that I don't wanna share just yet and I, this is all for me, right? But also join my newsletter. It'll be linked down below. I promise I won't blow up your inbox and it will contain gifts. <laughs> I will be uh, putting information there first. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go over to the publishing tracker and I'm just gonna duplicate this information. And real quick, I'm going to hide the information and we're going to like create all of the new stuff together. Yes. So let's go ahead and change the cover here because why not? You can really see how fun it would be. Let's pretend I'm writing more sci-fi stuff and I want a view of the whole world. Ta-da. You can also change the icon, which I think is so fun. Um, so right now I have it as a journal, but I guess you could set it up as like a computer and do a keyboard instead. That's fun. So right now we're looking at the current work in progress list. This does not include like just ideas that I've had that I haven't really worked on and it doesn't include already published projects. So on the leftmost side, we have the story title. As you can see, I did not actually title anything because even for my pretend example, I'm bad at titles. <laughs> we have book number one in series number one, book number two in series number one, a contemporary project and a sapphic romance. So on the status list, I basically have come up with all the different stages that I personally want to see. So I've added, it's an idea, I'm researching the idea, I'm drafting, revising the idea. It is with beta readers, that's in the design and marketing stage. Is it published? Am I line editing, outlining, rereading, rewriting, or is it with the editor? You can add more or less stages. It just depends on how you like to see it. 
as I'm juggling more and more projects, it's so much nicer to be able to look and know exactly what I mean. So under the pen name, you can change it. You can also change the color of the pen name to make it really fun. You could do yellow for our pretend KC. You could do blue for CK and purple for JT. It is so easy. And then I have this current designated publish date. This will be helpful for our different view where we can see what is coming up. So we're gonna say different December 1st, 2021 for book one and series one, which means that book two and series number one, we'll pretend that we're like super fast releasing this and it comes out two weeks later. <laughs> then I have this section where I'm looking at drafting. For me, drafting takes a really long time usually in comparison with the other stages. Revising does too. You can keep track of whatever you want. It's really easy to add another filter. All you do is have to add the dates and say this is revising, question mark, and then add in when you're revising. So we'll pretend that I'm revising from August 1st to August 31st. I'm revising the whole month of August on book number one and series number one. Ta-da! So at a glance, these are, again, active projects. Then I have my work in progress status view, so I can kind of see if there's like too many projects in one status. I'm someone who likes to have them in different ones. Like I don't enjoy drafting the same sort of concept at the same time. Does that make sense? I don't wanna be drafting two mysteries at the same time. That just is not gonna work for me. I also don't want to draft two stories that are both told in first person point of view, especially if they're both first person present. This is something that I've talked about before when I talk about juggling multiple projects. Um, I can get a lot of bleed over in voices if they're too, similar in structure, I will get a little bit confused on what's supposed to be what. Just because I often write in multiple projects a day, this is a rule I have learned about myself. You might be different. So anyways, I can kind of gauge it if I have too many of the cases, we'll say, in one category and be like, okay, I need to stagger this a little bit better, edit my publication schedule accordingly. Yes. Then we move over to the published dates. Once again, I find this a very helpful viewpoint. According to this, we have our first published date for the JT pen name <laughs> as October 23rd. So again, very quick drag and drop to change that. I could also add a comment of like when I want to start promo or maybe even when I've uploaded pre-order to certain websites. So pre-order uploaded to Amazon. We'll say 07, 07, 2021 send. The at is in case you have like multiple people working on it. You could add a whole other property or add more information. Add a block below a text block if you wanted to store all the notes. So if you wanted to put the pre-order info here, you could do it. <laughs> Once again, it is what you make of it. Then we have this inactive stories by pseudonym. I've talked about Zara Hoffman's idea of this to be written list and I'd done something similar but had never like conceptualized it that way. But basically projects that I have lined up but are not currently working on. Like they're just ideas really. So under Casey it might be like um the fantasy sci-fi merger. I don't know. That is an idea that I have. Sure. And so this way I would have all of my ideas listed by their individual pin names. I find that so helpful as I'm juggling things and as I'm trying to decide, okay, what pin name do I think this story should be under? I think it's also really helpful to just kind of keep in touch with yourself and be like, okay, I'm having a bunch of ideas for this one pin name. So am I just like, you know, what can my readers expect from this pin name? Am I not gonna really be publishing much over here, but it's just for fun. And it's just these kind of things that it's helpful to see visually in order to make career decisions. And finally, I have the timeline view. So what we've done here is we're going based off of the drafting time. You could have another timeline view that you do that is specifically for the revision timeline, however you wanna do it. When you see what I used to be working in with my Google Sheets, this is a steep improvement. But I'd absolutely love to hear how you guys organize things, especially if you have multiple pen names, but even if you're just juggling like one pen name and one project. I feel like I'm often all over the place and it's a really fun way to be. But that also means it's sometimes easier to get lost and I don't wanna be lost in my own brain. This is a scary and dangerous place. So other cool resources that I use that are not Notion is Canva. My friends are convincing me to try and use the pro version of it to go ahead and pay for it. I'm also hearing a lot of podcasts that I love where they're getting advertisements from Canva Pro. <laughs> 
so I might finally be convinced, but you could do so much in Canva. I do a lot of my thumbnails in there. Also check out Google Fonts, free fonts, especially if you're making your own covers. This was really helpful. Download the free fonts, play around in Photoshop a little bit more. Photoshop, I guess, could be another one. I actually have some YouTube courses that I love that my friend Brooke Passport put me onto about Photoshop, so I'm trying to get better and better at that as well. That same instructor also has classes over on Skillshare, so take the one month free trial. <laughs> and once again, Procreate that I will symbolically use the iPad for. I do also love using my passion planner for the sort of day-to-day -day organization of stuff. What you'll usually see me on Twitch streams do is I'll have my Notion pulled up in a tab always, and then I will have my passion planner not too far to the side. So please do comment down below. I would love to look into more resources to help me be organized, but also to help improve my graphics, to help take more classes and things that are interesting to you and your like author, writer, YouTube, whatever sort of career, your creative path. <laughs> Let me know as well if there's been any times that you have sort of changed and pivoted like I did with the Google Sheets over to Notion. But that is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Okay, I wonder if... No, I think it was fine where it was before. Put some out. <laughs>